Warning. Ruby Recap contains spoilers for Volume 5, Episode 10. We recommend watching the episode on the Rooster Teeth website before watching this video. If you don't care about spoilers, then you're welcome to watch. Don't forget to like and subscribe to stay updated on all of our videos. Remember, you have been warned. Justice will be swift! Justice will be painful! It will be Hey, welcome back, everybody, to Ruby Recap. This would be the episode four, uh, volume five, episode ten. Uh, True Colors, I do believe, is the actual name of the show. So, uh, once again, I am one of your hosts, Josh, and with me today we have Chandler, hey, uh, who Sorry is on that, his yeah. phone because his computer is wonky. Yeah, sorry for the audio. No, that's fine. And we also have Zach. Hello. And we also have Luke Blight 80, uh, 69, 69, Luke Blight 69, uh, Ryan. Hello. This episode of Ruby, probably one of the best episodes that we've gone this season. So we'll save the best for last, but let's talk about the Crow and Oss pin scene first. So what were you guys' likes and dislikes uh, about this? What do you guys think of the uh, quote-unquote world building that they put in this yeah. oh, who gave up yawn um <laughs> until john blows up at austin i don't want to see him again i don't want to see austin slash oscar again until john blows up at him and they keep teasing that like oh hey we have ruby oh maybe the rest will come in and then no nothing happens it's just info dump yeah, I, I feel like I feel like Oscar the Oscar Crow seeds have just been info dumps. Like we're not getting anything especially this episode, we didn't get anything new from him other than shooting down a theory that's been going around for a long time. That well, is, which I didn't even know that theory existed. We're also not getting, you know, hey, you know, or belling Ozpin and Os or Crow's relationship where you know revealing a bit more about them and how like they interacted in the past, you know, kinda how Ublek and Professor Port, which makes Professor Port and Ublek such likable characters because Whenever they're together, they banter about their past. Exactly. And these two guys are just like, huh. I, the one thing I do like about this segment is that they actually address uh, the pro huntsman going missing, disappearing. I thought those didn't exist. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I'm, I'm poking fun at the lack of pro huntsman that we've seen in this entire series. Yeah, yeah honestly, like... Like, are huntsmen just crap? Because all we see are dead huntsmen. Like, aren't they supposed to deal with Grimm? Very We've effective. seen Crow. We've seen the other teachers. Like, We've seen Ty. And that's it. Okay, my question is, why do they not, like, work in teams? Because if a team of huntsmen in training can take out Grimm better than pro huntsmen can, why do they not just put everyone in teams and say, this is your team for life. You're stuck with them. Live with them. Learn with them. Good luck. I mean, I, all, the, all the huntsmen are glorified mercenaries. That's all they are. I know, True. but they're crap. If they're mercenaries, they should at least be a bit good. <laughs> I mean... Because it's not yeah. like... It's not like when we saw that... It would, it would be nice if there were actually just some hiding and we get them in, like, the final episode against the Battle of the White It's been a while Fire. since we've seen a new customized, weird-ass, cool weapon. Yeah. I mean, oh. True. With Very true. Sword, and who, no, that's hap that's happened before. Yeah. Uh, honestly, like the pro the pro huntsman, like when we saw that list of like, oh what what all missions they were on, I would at least I'd see, hey, they're all completed, but they're all dead. You know, they're MIA, but you know, they went and completed this job. Well, I and, mean it was it was implied they were MIA because you saw some that were like ten weeks ongoing, eight weeks ongoing, etc. Dead. That means they're dead. Come oh, on yeah. now. Yeah. I mean, 
we don't know if they finished their jobs. Like, I'll at least like to know that, you know, huntsmen are better than hunters and huntsmen in training. Like, because right now I don't know that. Like, they seem more competent. Like, you have Ospin, then you have his, like, lieutenant's skill level, then you have Ruby's team and JNR. And, uh, and then you probably have Oscar and Pro Huntsman. That's the levels of skill right now that I see in the show. I mean, I wouldn't say Oscar's above the Pro Huntsman at this point. He can yeah. sword, fence he, he... a little bit, and turn into Ospin, who can fight, but he himself probably not a lot yet. He, he's probably about as good as Volume 1 John was. <laughs> or maybe a little bit better than that. Yeah. So we have Oscar in his own little level above Pro Huntsman. Well, I mean, Jean Volume 1 did defeat an Ursa. Yeah. Barely. But with one swing, though. But that's one swing. He, he did have outside help, though. That's the thing. Although, in Volume 2, he managed to kill one without any help. So. And Oscar has outside help as well. Well, inside help. Inside, outside. <laughs> inside, outside. Anyways, moving, moving along from that shitty-ass segment... Let's go into the segment everyone wants to talk about, which is the fucking best segment we've ever gone. Everyone dies since the end. end. They brought back the fluid fights. Finally. You gotta, yeah. You gotta gloss over uh, the Raven Leo scene, which which I know it was short, but Leo did manage to unintentionally break through Raven's psyche a little bit with that question she posed to him okay. at the end. That was okay, since we finally get to talk about the that was the most Sorry, just slammed my hand into my mic. The most thematical scene I have ever seen out of the whole show. Like, Leo, like, that was writing and just acting on a level I almost didn't think I would ever get out of a show like this. Like, that was... I'm still not convinced that Raven is playing a game. I'm still not convinced that she is tr- uh, just... Uh going with the flow of Cinder just to get at her own agendas. I actually do think she wants to kill Crow at this point. Gotcha. Uh, but honestly, like, if you need to point anyone to, like, well, how good's, like, the voice acting, like, the intentions of the characters, like, how do you see that, like, point to that scene? Because, like, that's, like, even though he knows he's doing evil and he's basically past the point of forgiving – He's still trying to do, quote unquote, the right thing. Like trying to say, like, why are you doing evil? Like, I know why I'm doing it. And well, here's... no, no, sorry, go ahead. I didn't mean to interrupt you. And I know why you're doing evil, but why? Like, do you really want to do this? Do you really want to basically cast your soul down to hell or whatever or the grim, and oh. basically be like that? Well, what I was gonna say is that Leo admits he's a coward and he admits he's afraid. And he's able to admit it, whereas Raven can't. And that's that's what I thought was brilliant about the scene, is yeah. it shows that Raven is a fearful coward. She just won't admit it to herself. Yes, and, and that's what I kind of liked. I was like, like, I was like, will I ever like Leo? Other than just like, you know, this cowardly villain. But that scene is like, his point of reference of like, this is why he's an amazing character. because He knows he's a failure, and he admits it. Raven and, is a stupid fucking bitch, and she knows it. Raven's a bitch. She, you idiot. I don't know if she knows it. I think that's the problem with Raven. I think she thinks she can take stuff on and still manipulate people. When I think she's just lying to herself. Oh yeah, she's very egotistical. I think she's prediction. Honestly. Prediction. Do you think Raven will die at the end of this uh, season or maybe next? I think Yang will save her, and like, like it will be like you know, you know the joke that's been running around since season two, like of you only get one. I don't know if we're going to have any characters die at the end, because, I mean, how long have some people been juggling the DM, myself included, that Gira or Kali were going to die, but neither one of them ended up dying? Well, Gira, yep. yeah. No one died. No one died. Oh, yeah, Kali's the strongest. She beat up Batman with a fucking tray platter. Well, but, she beat Batman, but um, yeah. Okay, I would have loved to see, like, the tray just turn into, like, her weapon. Like, that would have been hilarious. No, it needs to be a frying pan. Oh, oh frying yeah, pan, the yes. frying pan. That's like like my weapon of choice if I ever go into the magical universe. It's like just a frying pan. Like it's versatile. You can cook food on it and you can beat people up. 
Like, can okay, so can we say finally that thank you, Miles and Carrie, for fucking ending the Belladonna conflict here and now. Thank yeah. you for not making us wait another two weeks. Yes. I like that we're now able to start yeah, focusing on oh, hey, a potential conflict since, you know, it's about to be raised to the ground like Beacon was. Um, that's the major point I wanted to talk before the game is I feel no honest, like, dread, like, myself. I know, like, I should be. Like, that's what the basically the show's been trying to tell me is, like, feel dread about this thing, feel fear. Like, I don't. I'm like, it's going to happen. And, but I just don't feel like they really, like, put that pressure, like, like, people are going to die and stuff. Like That has to do with the fact that the White Fang doesn't feel like a viable threat, because how many of their operations that they themselves carried out ended up succeeding? Zero. The only one that succeeded was Beacon, and they had the help of the Grimm and Cinder's group in order to pull that off. In fact, the Grimm did most of the damn work in the first place, but Volume 2 kind of destroyed the threat of the Grimm because Team Coffee was overpowered as hell. So <laughs> we, just, we still need them back. Yes, that's something I want to see. Is like I don't. I hope we'll at least get them next season. Is like where we will get them, and we'll get Glinda, and we'll kind of get a look into like where, what everyone else is doing. Like everyone we met during Beacon. And can we just talk about the uh, fight scenes? The much better fight scenes yeah. this episode than we've gone past. This you. It's beautiful. Like yeah. The- for next season, I hope for the opener, you put this fight scene, like, at least some cuts from it into the opener, because it's beautiful. It's it's on par with... Chandler, you- did, Chandler, did you did you watch the Kruby episode? I did not. Ah, they they showed the mocap. Uh, oh, the mocap. Okay, now I'm- so, well, the mocap... Yeah, so going on what we were but talking about last thing. episode, the mocap room is there still. They are utilizing it. Just not, but the important thing. Ju- apparently, just not to the fullest effects that they can. The important thing Whoa. is that one of those asshole twin brother fox people we saw get literally squished to death and blown up by Gira. Oh, they would be happy. No, no, no. Yeah, Gira is Sud- like, it was sudden, it all worked. But I was so glad to see that guy die and then explode. Oh, God. Oh, Chandler, you must be so happy, basically, like, just be like, let Gear be an overpowered beast, and then it happened. Like, it... I'm actually, I'm actually a little disappointed. I, I'm actually a little disappointed that Gear wasn't an overpowered beast. I thought that him and uh, Dickhead's brothers fighting punch to punch, I thought Gear could have just, like, punched a bit harder than them. I thought that the brothers could have been a bit weaker. I mean, I think that I think even that was the point. In the spine. Is even if like if if they were made to look weak, we wouldn't have a cause to worry about them. And I think their strength relies more upon that they're a single unit together, and that's how they work. That's how they are able to overpower um or overpower uh, Gira to an extent. Because while he's strength, their agility—that's their key component—is they have agility on their side. True. And I don't know why. I mean, it was just amazing. Like, the way every character moved and just fought in that scene, it felt reminiscent of uh, definitely the Monty. The Monty uh, fighting. Yeah, like, it, it felt like the good old days. It, it felt a lot like season one's fighting, and that's that's amazing. I hope. I'm the scared. returned. To- I'm scared that this big fight won't will feel like it's like a small skirmish, like that's supposed to tag all of Haven Academy. Like I'm scared it's just gonna be like they only feel like a, it's a very small one instead of. You like know what we need to see? Movie. I figured it out. In the final fall of Haven or whatever the hell, when the fauna show up, they need to be in groups of animal species, like the bunny people hopping from roof to roof, the swim people just <laughs> emerging from the ocean, the bat. <laughs> gliding down the chameleon people just emerging from different shadows and buildings with weapons all cool. using their own special like ability traits God, that is brilliant that would, that would instill fear in me like just seeing like them just basically almost like a thieves guild like just like basically a pin appear out of thin air oh and the colleagues the are a force to be reckoned with so yeah that, since they're cat, that'd be jump from and, and that's kind of the first 
the, the Belladonna will Keep jump it. from orbit, but because they're cats, they'll land on their feet perfectly in front of the flight. Oh my gosh, that would be great. But I mean, that would honestly instill fear into everyone. Like, hey, it's not just that they have an overwhelming force. They know how to, you know, coordinate and like be sneaky to get their objective done. Like, they don't have to just burn everything inside and march everywhere. They can use their abilities and traits to that. That'd be awesome, Chandler. Like, it's probably not going to happen. I'm going to be disappointed now. So thanks for that. But uh, You're welcome. so, what did you guys? Yeah, I have good ideas. What did you guys th- uh, okay so what was your favorite uh part in this uh final belladonna fight scene Son. Just, Son. just just the rhythm again Son. i think the part that really got to me was when blake had Ilya pinned down and they were having that back and forth because it really showed just how desperate Ilya was and how desperate blake was at the same time with their conflicting ideologies because i think what blake sees in Ilya is a shadow of herself and how she used to be before she left the White Fang. Yeah. Um, and again, hats off to Ilya's voice actors because to me, she carried this entire episode with that voice acting that she did. So my screen froze on that uh, when she pinned her down and then I pulled out my phone and I just played Careless Whisper. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've, I've seen a lot of memes go, uh, go down about that. Uh, that one frame it's like when when blake decides she's she's willing to dom oh gosh <laughs> uh so I, I i was actually really surprised and really interested by this by this fight what i'm i'm not i'm not really sure what do you guys think of alia just turning on the white fang like that just I joining mean, it was, like yeah. it, it, it was yeah it, they've been predicting that for a while yeah i and go ahead i like that uh they have a redeemable character i would like to see someone i don't know i would like to see if we could get a leo redemption arc but uh no i i think we like he's gonna die like he's gonna die you know trying to do something He's gonna he's gonna get a heroic death. I can see because it'll be his way of getting redemption is dying for the greater good. Yeah, I, that, that's what I mean by redemption arc. Like whatever, like to see him in a better light, he does whatever is necessary for that character. But uh, I do like to see a bad guy kind of become a good guy, and I think it definitely fits Blake's character to kind of have a, 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 a son as a sidekick, but son's kind of like the angel on her shoulder, while LA is probably more like that devil on her shoulder so i think uh, i i could honestly see Ilya dying at the end of this volume because she her her story's come full circle now so i mean you gotta really Bane. you gotta protect Bane no matter what Ilya's in charge of the white fangs in calling it <laughs> <laughs> oh, i still say black but uh yeah as far as Ilya, you know going against the white fang it made sense in the uh drama and the tension you have between her and blake as well as the irony that the person she's trying to kill ends up saving her life as well as, you know, how the two Corsac and Fennec brothers, they weren't helping her out. They were giving barking orders at her, uh, no pun intended, because they're foxes. But um, it, di- it didn't feel forced. It didn't feel out of nowhere. And I liked how it was laid yeah. out. It, it, wa- it wasn't like, oh, I'm a good guy now. It was like, okay, I'll, you know, put myself at the mercy of everyone. I have to, people I just tried to kill. And, and then they were like, we'll give you a chance. And I think... That's I right. like I like that uh, the animation department t- took a risk with this episode with the scene and broke a balcony, broke a like uh, a pillar, a wooden pillar. I I thought the animation in this episode was superb. They tackled quite a few things. If you haven't seen the this week's Kruby episode. I highly recommend you watch it because not only do they show the mocap room, but they also show a couple new techniques that they've done in this episode. One being the balcony and the pillar, another being fire. They actually used fire for the first time. Yeah, because if you look at the fire animations that they had in this episode, and you look at how... uh... I forget which brother had the fire one, but that fire in episode nine was just god awful. But the fire in this one, it's like, oh, it actually looks like legit fire, and it looks good. 
Yeah. Yeah, I like that as well. Um, Something I'm still stewing over, and I know we kind of just glanced over this. Um, it felt like they honestly had the Oscar Osmond scene, so they could have their titular character, Ruby Rose, like just on screen. So they, like, yeah, it's still Ruby. Yeah. 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 Well, honestly, I could have been fine with it just being all based at Blake's place because it was perfect. I mean, it, it didn't kill the momentum of the episode. So I'm glad it was at the beginning, and then yeah. it was all done in one straight shoot, and then we just moved on to. The Raven Leo thing, and then we moved on to the Belladonna scenes, which was the meat and bones of this episode. Was there anything you guys had problems with, like in the Belladonna part? Not really. No, um, I really liked the uh, that fact that Blake froze Ilya's uh, sword. That was funny. I, I did stabbed me to Ilya and then pinching her. <laughs> I did have one minor gripe, and that had to do with um, Ilya turning off the lights in the Belladonna home because I was under the impression that Fonz could see in the dark. That, which, yeah, especially not, with a hat bonus. I'm not wrong in saying that, but somebody also pointed out that Ilya was using her camouflage to blend into the environment. So therefore, regardless of the um, how bright or dark it was, Ilya was blending into the environment, so it was harder for her to see. I mean, in season one, volume one, uh, in the history of Ublex class, what was the advantage the Faunus had? Jean was like, uh... Binoculars! Jean said? Binoculars! And, like, Binoculars. like... Not- vision. That, that is a good point. Do all Faunus naturally have night vision, or is it hereditary or genetic or what? It, it's supposed to be some do, but... Blake is a feline faunus, and cats can't see in the dark. Yeah, I feel like she was looking, Well, I mean, the way she was looking around, she was looking not like five feet away from her. She was looking kind of at a distance. I think it was honestly just the camouflage. She wasn't actually looking. She was hearing out where Ilya was, but Ilya was being careful with her steps. So this was... I, like, I almost thought this was a plot hole, but once somebody explained to me like some of the other like smaller details, it's like, oh, wow, they actually... Uh, duped me on that one because I thought I saw a plot hole when in fact I did not. So, kudos to Rooster Teeth on that one. Yeah, that worried me for a bit, but then I figured it out. Yeah, um, so yeah, any other thoughts or theories for next four episodes? Uh, I think it's safe to say we're getting the Battle of Haven at the end of the uh, uh, volume. Uh, uh, That would be safe to assume, yeah. And I'm not too worried about it because we are having Cinder's group going up there soon. Uh, Adam and Hazel are going to be there. Blake and her group are going to go up there. So I think we'll get something of a multi-episode engagement. I think episode 11 will be the final con before the storm. And then 12 through 14 will just be like the big throwdown. Because normally the finale fights are about three up, Well, at least in volumes two and three, they were three uh, episodes long. Well, you volume- remember they're doing longer episodes. So they may only have it one to two episodes, if anything. Now that that depends if they do um, another like nineteen minute long episode, and whenever you see the timelines of the episodes, like when it's nineteen minutes or fifteen minutes, you gotta count in the fact that it includes the intro and the outro, so that shaves off like two minutes right there. I actually wouldn't be surprised if uh, if Ruby or if uh, Rooster Teeth made the final episode twenty or thirty or even thirty minutes. That would I wouldn't be surprised. You mean we'd get a full episode? Wait, does that mean they'd be adding commercials in? I don't know. A three-hour-long finale. Well, yes, that's that's what we need, a three-hour-long finale. Basically. A full movie for just season five or, like, I'd like a three-hour finale for, like, the end of Ruby. Like, just, like, basically, yeah, you watched basically enough, and now we're going to give you a whole movie at the end of it. Like, that'd I mean, be- that's, that's basically what Game of Thrones is doing with its final season. A little bit. <laughs> But it'd still be nice to have one Ruby because, like, it's an amazing show. It has m- amazing characters and an amazing cast and amazing voice actors. But at the end of the day, like, it's honestly up to how the writers, directors, and creators like try to put all their uh, awesome talent to use. I honestly hope that these final four episodes go down well enough that Carrie doesn't want to leave uh, the writer's room on oh, yeah. Ruby. Yeah, if he leaves, then this, this shows it's some deep shit. Yeah. It's- I, 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 do not, 
I do not trust Miles to run this entire thing on his own. I don't trust him. Not on his own, no. Miles did great. At least not at this point. Seasons of Red versus Blue he directed. I think he'd be all right. Red, Red, Red versus Blue is a different show than what this is trying to be, though. I said the same thing as you, Tanner. Uh, I think Miles will do fine. He's Miles. But I think the problem is they would definitely not want to just leave it to one person uh, on the show as a writing team. So I I teeth. I already if, idea. <laughs> if Kerry did leave, I could possibly see him maybe as a consultant to Miles, just not as a full-on writer if he did leave. But so t- I'm I'm really hoping he doesn't. Is he talking it, about like, rooster teeth or no, yeah, he's yeah, like there's it, no Ruby, the Ruby writer's room. Okay. Okay, so he's not working rooster teeth on other Oh, probably on that new anime they're trying to do, or whatever they call it. The Mecha one. Yep. The Mecha one that I'm really excited for. <laughs> okay, so, uh, yeah, any other any other thoughts on this episode? It was good. Keep oh, going. Yeah. Don't leave Carrie. We love you. I was going to say, if, if Carrie does end up leaving, they should get some of the writers from uh, Avatar The Last Airbender, the cartoon. Yes. They, oh. They, or no. they would ask for a premium, though. Like, well. Right. Expensive to get them. Work, no, because the if no, because if they did, if they did get the writers from uh, the Last Airbender, the show would be over in three more seasons. Oh, nah, nah, no. Nah. They just knew how to write well. No one, no one, no. Uh, I, <laughs> I, thought, I thought that was a good joke. I made a reaction. Great. Hey, it ended at a perfect time, unlike <coughs> Legend of Korra. <coughs> I think he's actually dying now. I got it right. <laughs> what, what, what he went fake? from a fake cough to a real cough. Sorry. You went from a fake cough to throat cancer. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Okay. okay. Well. Thank you, ladies. All right. Well, I guess I guess we'll just uh, end it here then. Uh, thank you, everyone who stuck around to the very end of the video. Uh, hopefully you guys did enjoy that, and um, also a few reminders. This week we will be starting the Rooster Teeth Community Podcast, uh, RT Fancast. Uh, that would be on Tuesday. It goes live, and then Wednesday it'll be up on Facebook, and then Friday it'll be up on YouTube. So check that out. Also uh, for for uh the final two episodes of ruby i don't know if anyone here knows puns of damage yeah i know her or of her so me and her have been talking and if she's available she said she's more than willing to come on for the final two episodes oh great that'll be great yeah we try we tried to collaborate with her for uh during uh rtx but that didn't work out so hopefully this does and uh, also, I do believe this next weekend, Rooster Teeth is taking the week off from Ruby, correct? Yeah. Yes. Uh, we will not get an episode uh, this coming weekend. So the tw- All right. So the 23rd, yeah, no so new the, Ruby. Yeah. So the Christmas weekend, we will not be doing an episode. We will be having a one-week break. So we will see you guys back again in two weeks for episode 11. Goddamn. Going into New Year's with that. So, yeah. Once again, hopefully you guys did enjoy the episode, and we will see you guys next time. I am one of your hosts, Josh. With me, we had Chandler. Chip. Zach. Hello. And Ryan. Uh, we will see you guys next time. Later. We just had a sub sandwich. Deuces.